I'm going to guarantee you right now that this is going to be one of the, if not the most valuable Facebook ad video you will ever see here on YouTube completely for free here on my YouTube channel right now, uncovering all of my 2022 Facebook ad strategies. What's going on everybody? Tanner here with another video. Hope you're all having an amazing and productive day so far. This is a special video for two reasons. One, because it is now 2022. It's a new year with new opportunities and two, because I've spent the last year, couple of years, running Facebook ads, learning new things, and figuring out what really works and what's sticking right now into the new year of 2022. Because we both know that things have not gotten any easier and they will not continue to get easier. And a lot of things have actually changed for the worse when it comes to Facebook advertising. But I've spent money, spent time in order to get you right now these top strategies that are working for me right now and actually giving you a case study, we're gonna be going here on my computer in just a second, where I took an unprofitable e-commerce brand from a 0.54 ROAS to a profitable 2.2 ROAS in just a couple of months while also scaling up the budget. And the reason I chose this case study to be in my 2022 Facebook ad strategy reveal is really just because it's relatable. More times than not with Facebook ads, I'm working with terrible numbers and working to turn them around, but working backwards. So instead of showing you a Grand Slam winner ad account, kind of like I did a year ago from today on my 2021 Facebook ad strategy reveal, where that was just something working super well, I'm showing you something that's very realistic and showing you exactly what I did to take something that was pretty much dead and bringing it back to life. And this is a pretty special video to me, so all I ask is for you to actually utilize the information as you watch this video. I would say 95% or more of the people that watch this video are just gonna move on compared to the very few, hopefully you, that go in here, watch it, and actually utilize it to see different results. Because as Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So I've done countless things over the last several months to make this brand work and others work and that's exactly what you're going to see here in this google doc right now so let's get into it so now we're here on my computer i've made this google doc kind of as a visualization aid because if you're a brand new beginner you may be wondering what the hell is going on if i'm just talking to the camera but maybe if you're an expert or you're used to this stuff you would know what i'm talking about but either way this is for us to follow along together and help you understand exactly what's going on and what i mean and just so honestly you can look back at this without having to listen to me now, we're going to be covering my most profitable strategies here into 2022 in the three different stages of your traffic, you know, cold, warm, and hot. So cold is people that have never seen your brand before. Warm is going to be people that may have seen you a couple times but never really engaged or people that have similar demographics to those that are interested in your brand. And hot is going to be people that have followed you, messaged you, bought something from you anything along those lines. Now, real quick, just some background and interesting information overall about this brand. They reached out to me in August of 2021. They've done very well as a wholesale company, um, very, very successful, and they now want to start working into e-commerce. So that's what they did. They have good products, they ship in-house and have a large product selection. So for example, a niche store, maybe similar to this would be something like an accessory store for electronics, it sells phone cases, chargers, whatever that may be large product selection. So in August of 2021, when they reached out, a large marketing agency was actually running ads for this brand. Now, when I say a marketing agency, I'm not talking about your, you know, three employee agency that handles 10 clients. I'm talking about a very large company that has hundreds, if not thousands of employees and services, who knows how many clients and their campaigns were doing absolutely terrible. And in my opinion, I believe large marketing agencies like that don't really have best results most of the times because you know their employees these people are not what i would consider like myself a specialist who services you know a handful of clients the people that are working in these agencies are people that are employees they're following what they're told to do and are working more off of um, what they're told instead of intuition kind of like what i do but there was two main things i actually noticed in the ad account you may be doing as well that i saw were making these numbers unprofitable so when they reached out i offered them like a complimentary i'm going to look at your ad account just let you know if there's anything that I notice that I think I can help with. And the first thing I noticed was something I like to call the shotgun effect. So if you know what a shotgun is, you know, it's a shell that has pellets inside of it. And when it shoots, it disperses these pellets in a certain range uh, just to kind of hit something. It's not like you're shooting one bullet aiming at a certain target. You know, this is like used for bird hunting. So what these people were doing in the ad account were creating these campaigns with random numbers of ad sets with, you know, seven to 10 ad creatives under each ad set. 
And overall, it was just kind of a very weird strategy. They only had a few campaigns running, but another piece of that was also inside of each ad set, they would have you know 20 audiences mixing cold, warm and hot all together. And it was just a big jumble and mess of stuff that you know wasn't working. A 0.54 ROAS is not good at all. And the people who own and run this brand obviously are not in the e-commerce space. They're from wholesale, so they don't know what's going on or how to change this. So they're just kind of like, what the fuck? And just real quick, why I don't like the shotgun effect strategy is just because you're trying so many things in one group. And with Facebook, if you're running all these ads, you can't break down an ad set and see which audience out of the 20 in one ad set is the most profitable. So all of them are gonna be spending money and you're never gonna really be able to get out of that. You know, For some people it may work, but most time I would say not at all. Now the second thing I noticed was the lack of change. They weren't proactive at all. They left the same campaigns running for multiple months on end, weren't really trying new things. And as the people from the brand that I started working with told me, the agency pretty much when they would get on their weekly calls would just tell them it has to do with, oh, you know, uh, delayed tracking or the new iOS updates, whatever it is, just to try and keep them as a client. And they, I assume, the marketing agency just didn't know what to do and it wasn't working but they wanna keep you as a client, so they have protocol. So let's get into the exact strategies now. We're actually gonna do them in order as I did them to turn around this ad account and what exactly we did. And since this is a pretty big video for me, my 2022 strategy reveal, I have something else I'm gonna show you can do if you have a Shopify store to get, typically I would say an extra 20% in extra revenue is very, very possible uh, with no extra cost. It's something, for whatever reason, it's been around, but a lot of people don't use. But We'll get there anyways. What I wrote here is just as a quick note, keep in mind this is a brand with a large product selection, so you may need to think about these strategies in an alternative angle. Um, and what I say that is just because some people I know watching this may just be having, you know, they test one product at a time or whatever it is. So um, you're smart if you're watching this video, so uh, you'll be able to figure it out. I'm gonna tag along as well and kind of aid you in the process. So the first strategy here we're gonna be covering is called Rhino Revive. Now, the reason it's called Rhino Revive is because one, I like rhinos, my favorite animal. Two, uh, Revive is, you know, this is the first strategy I applied to this ad account to try and revive it. So it's tying three campaigns into one. I'm pretty much just finding past data points and using them to my advantage. And so if you're starting from scratch on a new ad account, you haven't run ads before, um, you know, campaign one is not gonna apply to you, but campaign two and three are still gonna be uh, beneficial to you. So campaign one, I named rehabilitation because what I'm doing is cold targeting here. It's a campaign with ad set level budgets. I still love using ad set level budgets to test, but more on that later. Five ad sets with one interest in each. Super simple, I always do a no interest ad set. And then I put four or less existing creatives under each ad set in that campaign. So um, what I did was go into their page post, see which ads have been most engaged with. I went on the ad account, saw which ads had gotten the most purchases in the past, and just seeing if I could just use what's already there, do something very simple, and get a better result just by being more organized compared to like the shotgun effect like the agency was doing. The second campaign is what I just called product testing because you know they have several products. I chose their best selling products and chose to create my own version of three product focused creatives for those top best sellers. So what I did was create an ad set level budget campaign like the rest of these and did one no interest ad set per product with no breakdowns or anything else and put three product focused creatives under each ad set. So that way I'm spending money towards three creatives, letting Facebook kind of do its thing and just seeing what was, what was sticking. So the third campaign that I launched, I launched these all at the same time by the way, was catalog sales. Um, so again, ad set level budget. So these first two campaigns I'm talking about, you know, you create the campaign for optimizing for conversions and then purchases on the ad set level. But for the third campaign, it's optimizing for catalog sales and then purchases. And typically what I'm doing is a dynamic uh, carousel. So what I did for catalog sales was create a no interest ad set again. And I say plus others on data you may have because this was an existing brand. They had data, they had audiences, they were spending money, they just weren't profitable. So I made some other ad sets with some warm audiences, like some lookalikes and things that were there already. And then one dynamic carousel under each ad set. So if you don't know what that is already, it pretty much you know, just attaches your product line from Shopify to Facebook and shows whoever's seeing the ad what Facebook thinks that person is going to like. So you're not putting a specific product or whatever. You can do that, 
but this is just letting Facebook do its thing more than anything. Now, getting here into the campaign rules, there's not too many of them. It's very simple. It's just, what I was doing is targeting the main two countries. So for this brand, it's United States and Canada. You may have just one or you may have a few, but I recommend no more than two for these campaigns. And I did no adjustments or breakdowns in the ad set, so I didn't change the age or the uh, placements or anything like that. Because Facebook is smart, the algorithm's super smart. If you have a product that's genuinely good, Facebook is gonna find that, that group of people that market for you and kind of throw you some bones. But what I said here on the last line is use a budget based on your average profit margin. So when you're testing one product at a time, it's easy to say, I'm selling this for 60 and it costs me 30, so I have a 50% margin, so I know I can spend up to $30 on an ad for this product and break even. But if it's above 30, then I'm unprofitable. But for this, when you're running ads for multiple products, I kind of just had to calculate the average profit margin for the brand itself. So they told me their average cost of goods and just kind of measured that out so I know what I was doing. But you can make your own decision based on whatever your situation is. But pretty much what I would say, if you're selling something for 60, it costs you 30 of a $30 margin, I would probably recommend either a 10 or a $15 a day budget just because it gives it a little bit of time to spend. You don't want it to spend all of your first margin um, right away and just burn it up without giving it a little time to optimize. And this campaign isn't anything fancy by any means. We're not into that stuff just yet, but the goal more than anything was to get some movement going in a controlled way and just to see what sticks. And for this brand at first when I launched these, I would say at least half of the stuff didn't work at all. And some stuff had some movement. It was funny because it was more profitable than the agency already off the bat. It wasn't a good ROAS, but it was better than a 0.54. And uh, for this client here, the, the catalog dynamic product ad worked the best, but they weren't yet profitable. So I knew there was still a, a lot of work to get done. So now let's actually go over the situations of what's gonna happen inside of these campaigns. So situation one is gonna be, you spent over half of your margin on each ad set with no conversions at all. So that would be, if your margin is $30 and it spent $15 with no conversions at all, then you can kind of go in and play around with the, the campaigns and ad sets themselves to try and manipulate what's working and what's not if you're on a tight budget. Now, I'm gonna get into this a little more in my rules I'm about to show you in the next uh, page on this doc, but if you wanna spend more money and be aggressive, you're more than welcome to. But I know a lot of people work more on a tight budget and wanna be very, very strict, which is completely fine. So if you spend over half of your margin in each ad set and there's no conversions, what I want you to do is for, this only works for campaign one and two, is to check the indicators for the top performing ad creatives. Since there's multiple ad creatives under each ad set, you know, the budget is spending towards a couple creatives instead of just one at a time. So what you can do is go in there, use things like the CPM, the click through rate, the cost per click, if there's any added carts or checkouts initiated, things like that. I'm gonna show you columns here on the next page as well to set up. But you can turn off the ones that aren't working and just leave on the ones that are. So while it still spends you know, towards the full margin, it's only gonna spend more towards what's already working. Um, so turn off the creators that don't seem to have potential, let the top performers spend up to the margin point before turning them off. And obviously, as I said, this is a very strict way of doing it. Um, I like to give things a little more time, but that's just me. I'm a more I'm a more ballsy person. So situation two, which is one probably a majority of you guys are going to be in, is you have some ad sets that are break even or up. They're on the edge of profitability and losing money. They're just kind of riding that wave. What I'm going to tell you is number one, don't edit that active ad set because most times it's going to put into review. And what I want you to do is try duplicating that ad set two times. When I say winning here, obviously it's not a winner just yet because it's break even, but duplicate it two times. Make the first duplicate a different interest or audience um, depending on which campaign it is. I'd say for most of you, it's probably gonna be an interest. I really love no interest targeting, but try what you want. And then leave the second duplicate the same targeting as that original one, but try new ad copy. Maybe it's changing the headline just by one word or it's redoing the entire copy because you never know if this may work better than the original one. So as long as you're staying above break, even on these ad sets, I'd recommend just keep trying interest and creatives. And I wrote here just to wait for five or more sales before moving on to the other strategies. But even if you haven't made five sales yet, I have something cool I wanna show you on the next slide, just kind of my rules and tracking stuff that'll help you out right now. But uh, 
This may seem a little confusing and messy now, but will make sense. I do understand this is not the easiest stuff to comprehend. Um, even to me, sometimes it can get confusing. It's a lot of numbers. But over two to three days from these three campaigns and everything you're doing, you want to be left with a group of profitable or break-even ad sets. That was the goal for the Rhino Revive campaign strategy that I did. Three campaigns, just kind of testing a few things in an, kind of like an organized chaos, just trying to get a group of something that was I could work off of. And what I wrote right here was this client was fine with me being a bit more aggressive, essentially meaning that I was following situation one and two, whether something was profitable or not. I pretty much just played it that if it made a sale, then I was going to keep it on and see what would happen. So, um, you know, it's not that hard to beat a pi point, excuse me, it's not that hard to beat a point five four ROAS. So the goal is to focus on creatives more than audiences and you will see results, which I already said, but very, very true. Now scrolling down here, this next page, we're gonna quickly just go through some standards that you need to follow in order to stay on top. These are just some basic, simple things I do that don't cost you money, that are just helpful. So we both know Facebook's tracking can be off, it's very common. And instead of using like a high price service, if you don't want to use one of those, I typically don't, you can use URL parameters on the actual ad creative level of Facebook and look at the results on Shopify. Again, it's not always 100% accurate. More times than Facebook, I would say it's, it's accurate. So how you want to set up and what actually a UTM parameter is, is pretty much just another way to track the source. So if someone, let's say from your campaign one, ad set two, creative one, clicked on the ad and bought, then they would have a specific URL that was tracked by Facebook that says exactly what campaign ad set and ad creative it was from. And we can look at that on Shopify reports or Google Analytics. So what you're gonna do is go to the ad creative level of Facebook, scroll all the way down, and you're gonna see see URL parameters, then click build a URL parameter. I'm gonna put a little pop-up right here so you can see what it looks like just in case you can't find it. But right here, let me zoom into it real quick. You can see these are the parameters I put. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect by any means, but this is what I use because it's not something I'm looking at a ton, but it's helpful if I do wanna double check things sometimes. So then what you can do as you start getting some traffic and wanting to check things out, you can go on to Shopify, go to analytics, reports, and then search in the little top search bar, sessions by refer. So then when you click on that, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff going on, but in the top right, you can click edit columns and then scroll down, you're gonna be able to select UTM campaign content, UTM campaign name, and UTM campaign terms. And what that's gonna allow you to do is then in front of your face show you where your conversions are actually coming from specifically by the campaign, ad set, and creative level. Now before we get into my super CBO strategy, there's three more things very quickly we're gonna go over. One is organize your dang ads. Because it's easy when you only have one campaign or you're just testing one product to know what's going on in your ad account. But when you start getting higher level scaling, spending more money, testing a lot of different things, it can get messy very, very quick. And you want things to be as organized as possible um, so you know kind of what you're doing. You know, if you're doing a daily audit in your ad account or weekly, whatever it is, you wanna know exactly what's going on and be able to take notes and be able to look back on that. So I wrote here as an example that if you're naming a product testing campaign, like from the Rhino Revive strategy, it would look something like this. You know, campaign name, I just put here, TP, my name, product test, no interest, USA, Canada, those are the countries I'm targeting. This is no interest because I'm only doing no interest targeting. And then it's for the product test. So what I could do here in the ad set name is gonna be iron, no interest, gold, no interest. And that's just the ad set name, keeping it simple, but I know which products they are. You know, just for example, iron and gold. And then in the ad level, you know, we're doing three product focused creatives under each. You know, I would name them Iron Image 1, Iron Video 1, Iron Image 2, whatever you're doing, whether it's all videos, all images, or all carousels, just name it whatever it is so you know what it is. Now, number three, to know what you're looking for is arguably one of the most important pieces of this video because a lot of people don't have their own set of rules to fall back on if it's tough for them to make a decision. So if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail is what they say. Um, so one, you can set up your columns properly. I'm gonna show you what I do here, but obviously you can edit this to how you wanna do and what you're looking for. But some of my standby rules that I also break are to don't let an ad set spend more than your margin without a conversion. Now that's one I break a lot because I'm just a bit more aggressive. 
Don't edit a profitable ad set in any way. It may go into review. We mentioned this. The only time I edit an ad set that's active and profitable is maybe the budget. Um, use column tools like CPM, CTR, and CPC to help you make decisions. Don't be scared to try something random and weird. This is probably something I do the most. Trying random weird stuff, clicking buttons, seeing what works, what doesn't. But Facebook is smart and typically I get the best results off of doing the most simple things, which you're about to see in the super CBO strategy. When testing ad creatives, just because it didn't work doesn't mean you shouldn't ever use it again. It's very common for people to use an ad creative, test it, image, video, whatever it is, and then just pretty much throw it away because it didn't work one time. But the reality is you wanna test the options for that creative. Like I mentioned earlier, testing the copy, changing the headline, maybe changing the first couple seconds if it's a video, or just making it different and testing it that way. Now, if it did complete garbage compared to other things you've done, then yeah, I probably wouldn't care to use There's no point because you have things that are working better that you can work off of. But lastly, and very common for people that start getting a little traction is, don't try to circumvent Facebook if you run into issues. And what that means if you don't know already is, for example, someone messaged me I was talking to who was very profitable or like a four ROAS or something on their store, but they had a $150 a day spending cap on their ad account, which typically goes away after seven days or less if you hit the limit every single day. But he wanted to spend more money because it was profitable. So he had made another ad account and another page and was just trying to market it through there. But you know they consider that circumventing. They cap you for a reason, whether it's a new ad account, new billing method, and you, know, you try to get around that, they're gonna notice that and disable you. And the last thing you wanna do is get screwed by Facebook because they're not nice. Um, there's, not, there's not good support. So you wanna do things right from the start. And the last thing here before the super CBOs is one, just beginner's checklist before running your ads, which is one, verify your domain. Step two, set up your aggregated events. And I actually have another video, look a little bit before this is called iOS 14 Facebook ads, something like that, um, where I go and show you how to actually do this in step. Now let's get into the second part of this strategy and what's the most profitable for me right now, which I call them super CBOs. There's two versions of them I use right now, V1 and V2. I'm sure there'll be more variations uh, very, very soon, but uh, this is what's working the best for me right now, kind of acting as an anchor. So it's very simple, but effective. And the reason I made super CBOs and kind of started testing these and ended up with what I call super CBOs V1 and 2, uh, which I'm gonna show you how to set up, is because you can test as many separate ad set level budget campaigns as you want, but at the end of the day, Facebook definitely now does favor, I would say, larger combinations of data and CBO campaigns most of the time. Ad set levels can work. That's what I used to scale with. But nowadays, into 2022, I would say not so much. And definitely a benefit to super CBOs is because they're a lot easier to scale compared to how bipolar ad sets can be when you mess with the budget. Most times when I mess with the budget of an ad set, it usually fucks it. But with a CBO, I've kind of learned a way to manipulate it to where it can kind of maintain its profitability point wherever it is up to a certain budget raise. So um, this strategy, super CBOs, these can be used for catalog sales or for just purchase conversions, um, you know, using normal creatives. So I'm gonna tell you that for super CBO V1, I like to optimize for conversions and then purchases. And for V2, that's gonna be for my catalogs and dynamic product ads. And catalog sales can work well for you, even you know if you have five products, 10 products, it's still something um, that's, I don't know, I, I love it, but you gotta try it and let me know how it works for you. So how do you actually set up the Super CBO V1? So V1, I'm gonna tell you to create a CBO campaign, budget 50 to $150 a day. I've never tried anything lower than 100 a day, honestly, for this strategy. But I know some people are on a lower budget or they're just not as profitable where they want to be, so they don't want to take a risk. So you can try a lower budget. I'm just saying that I haven't done it. But I also don't want to say that just by doing a higher budget means it's going to work because it probably won't if your ads aren't ready, aren't working. But you don't want to move to this stage into the super CBOs until you have just like a group of ad creatives that are break even or up for you. Because if not, then you're just kind of trying to spend more money on something that's already not working and you want to do less of that not more of that super cbo v1 cbo campaign it's going to be four ad sets total so there's going to be one cold targeting ad set and three warm now keep in mind there's no breakdowns on here same rules as the first strategy rhino revive so there's going to be four ad sets total in this campaign 
And again, it's similar rules to Rhino Revive campaign with no breakdowns, um, nothing like that. And there's only going to be one audience in each ad set. So there's going to be one cold targeting and three warm targeting ad sets. And that's just all purely based off of the audiences. So for the cold one, I don't know if it's superstition or it actually works, but uh, it's been working for me. So I just leave it in there. Typically a no interest ad set. The campaign, I would say, usually doesn't spend a ton of money towards it. But in my opinion, I feel like it kind of holds over and balances out, um, you know, the three warm creatives or three warm audiences. If they start to die out a little bit, it can start fueling some new data into there with the cold. But when I say three warm ad sets, you know, those are going to be audiences like different types of look like. So ones that I like to use in the Super CBO V1 campaign is going to be like a 10% purchase look like. And then you're going to put your two top creatives under each ad set. So that's going to be whatever existing page post ID you already have for a creative that you found from the Rhino Revive strategy or whatever else you're doing, put them under there. So it's going to be, you know, four ad sets and eight total creatives, but it's two of the same under each ad set. Um, so that way this money is going to be able to spend, you know, it doesn't spend evenly because it's a CBO, but it spends towards what it thinks is going to do the best. And I've honestly had very, very good success with, uh, this super CBO strategy, but the V2 is the one that's honestly worked the best for me. Um, but the purpose of the super CBO for me is, like I said, to act as an anchor. These are campaigns I like to have in my ad account that spend a majority of my daily budget and do well enough to counteract any unprofitable ad set level budget campaigns or other CBO tests that I have going on because I can just keep testing things and not stress about being on the edge of losing money or making money. Um, it instead is made to spend a majority of my budget and basically keep me afloat while I test other creatives and stuff like that. You know, as I said in, in the last page, I like to test weird and just kind of random stuff sometimes. And as I said before, the Super CBO V2 is the most profitable campaign type I've seen pretty much for the last six months, especially for this client. Um, it helped me turn around their ad account from a 0.54 ROAS to a 2.2 ROAS, which was profitable for them. They have a break even of around 1.3 while scaling up the budget from, I think it was 10K when the agency was running it in August to I think last month, maybe we spent 40K, 50K, give or take. But the objective of Super CBO V2 and what it does is just gets the most values possible out of your customers and your traffic, which is also exactly what the sponsor of this video does after sell. I mentioned earlier in this video that I had a cool little trick and something you can use if you have a Shopify store to get more out of your traffic and customers, which typically results in, you know, I'd say is more than possible 15 to 20% extra revenue. And if you're watching this video, you're likely running Facebook ads already or are about to. So this is something you can do outside of Facebook ads to pretty much just get you better value out of your ad spend and traffic. Right now in 2022, I would say one of the best ways to get more profit in your pocket is by using upsells. But I'm not talking about your normal upsells that pops up when you click the add to cart button and scares away your customers. I'm talking about using after sell to create post-purchase upsells that don't scare away and deter that initial order. If you're already driving traffic to your store, already making sales, and you're not offering any type of extra value with the post-purchase upsell, you're essentially costing yourself money because of the lack of risk that this really has. And to show you how simple it really is, I just downloaded the free after sell app onto this test store to show you that I can make a funnel in less than 30 seconds probably. So now let's create this funnel together real quick. I'm just gonna create this button right here, new funnel, because I don't have one already. And this is going to be where you're able to actually select your triggers. So it can be to pop up after every single order on your store, or you can separate your upsells based on product value, whatever you want. It's completely up to you. But what I'm going to do for this test example is do a product trigger. So I'm going to select right here, my main product, which is a camera for $500. We're going to save that. So whenever someone buys the camera, there's going to be a post purchase upsell. And for the first upsell, what I'm going to choose is something I called the photographer bundle for $200, which I think is like a tripod, SD card, and extra batteries. So kind of like, you know, something uh, someone may want if they just buy the camera on its own. And the good thing about this stuff is because they already have trust with you. They just purchased the camera. They already have it. They bought it. They spent the money. So now it's just seeing if there's another offer that they may want to take advantage of. And if accepted is going to be upsell number two, which I'm going to do as a two year warranty. So that's if they also accept the photographer bundle, just to give them something light, see if they'll still take it or not. But if they decline the photographer bundle off the bat, then I can choose a downsell, which I'm not going to go directly to the warranty. 
but I'm gonna go to something just a little bit cheaper, which is just extra camera batteries. So now what we can do right here, which I actually really, really like, is actually customizing your thank you page on Shopify, it's something a lot of people don't do. So what you can just do here is click left area and just add widget if you wanna add a video, like a little thank you video made by someone or whatever it may be and choose the settings that you want. If you really want to, you can even offer something else here in the right area. So with almost 300 five-star reviews on the Shopify app store, it's almost a no-brainer to download after sell, get the 30-day free trial. They also have a free plan available and just test it out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you. So now what you've been waiting for and my favorite part of this video, let's create our super CBO V2. The focus of this campaign is just to capture repeat customers and lost customers through our hot audiences and use catalog sales, dynamic product ads to let Facebook do all the work and put the right product in front of the right person's face. And I personally like to use a discount split test method on this, um, which I'm gonna show you the copy I do for that roughly just as an idea. If you have five or less products, it may perform better using just normal creatives, purchase conversions with the same audience style and copy style. Um, but there's only one way to find out is actually trying it. But this is exactly what I've done and still do right now and is doing best for me. So you're creating a CBO campaign. You can see I put a lower budget here just because these are your hot audiences. And you typically can't spend as much money because the audiences are only so big compared to your lookalikes and cold audiences. But what we're going to do again, four ad sets total. It's going to be one warm audience and then three hot. So three hot are going to be things like people that have bought from you in the last 90 days, 180 days. You're going to put one that has people that have visited your website but didn't buy in the last 180 days, people that clicked on an ad but didn't view a product page, something like that. All three of those being completely hot, separate audiences that are decently large. You don't want to minimize them too much. Um, that may be a, a super CBO V3, 4, or 5. But the other thing is a one warm audience. So again, like a big lookalike audience, I kind of do it again just to kind of tie it down because sometimes your budget can't optimize fully towards the smaller hot audiences. So just give it something to uh, spread its wings. And what we're gonna do is create a dynamic product ad, carousel ad, then duplicate it. So there's gonna be two ads under each ad set, similar to Super CBO V1, except these are dynamic product ad carousels. And what you're gonna be doing is creating two discounts on your store. This is what's worked best for me. Create one discount code that's a percentage off and one that's a dollar amount off. So you may need to calculate which amounts make the most sense for you and your margins. But then what I do under those dynamic product ad carousels, since we don't know which product in a row it's gonna be showing to the customer, is just using a primarily discount oriented ad copy and editing the second creative to match it. So an example of what it looks like split testing these call to actions is, one, you know, you, your offer could be just $10 off your order using fall 10 or 20% off using fall 20. And you'd be surprised by which ones people take. And honestly, I would say more people take the percentage off, but it's not too far off most of the time because I actually leave both offers on at all times so far when I've tried this and it's continued to work well compared to trying to turn one off and just let it spend all the money towards one. If again, with the CBO, if it's spending money, and it's profitable, I mean, no need to touch it. There's no point. Um, you don't wanna mess something up that's already good. Now, my super CBO rules for V1 and V2 is kind of like what I just said, if it's break even, don't, don't mess with it. Also, what I said is to not duplicate these exactly the same to scale horizontally. So what I mean by that is if you're spending $100 a day, but you wanna spend 200 and get the same results, I would not duplicate the same campaign at $100 a day and expect it to get the same results. Instead, what I do is try to slowly raise the budget day over day on that initial campaign. I would say 40% or less is least dramatic most of the times. And you'll see that it takes a few days for your changes to come into effect with Facebook. You know, there's delayed tracking and overall, so you see the optimization process go that route. Um, the only one I would try and be careful with when raising budgets is the V2, just because it's a hot audience. And if that budget's raising while your other campaigns aren't raising, then it's probably not gonna work out because you're not getting more traffic to counteract and work with that budget. Take everything I say with a grain of salt and use it how you wanna use the information. This is exactly what I did for this case study and this client for this brand and we turned it around in just a couple of months. But you wanna try things on your own as well and you know use it in, in different ways. Don't always just do something exactly as I say and if it doesn't work then just give up and be mad about it but instead 
maybe try what I say. If it works, great, and work off of that. If not, then see maybe what went wrong, what wasn't working. Is it something else that doesn't even have to do with the ads, which I would say is a, a, oftentimes, and then go from there. But uh, have fun, know your rules. We lost access, or yeah, so with Facebook updates in 2021, we lost a lot of access to metrics that we could use like for breakdowns, for looking at age and things like that um, on the ad account. But you can still kind of get around that. I've said this before, but if you still, you can still break down on the ad account, an ad set or a campaign level, whatever you want to do. And you can see which demographic is spending the most money towards. So if you break it down by age, you see the budget spending most of the money towards 18 to 24, then, and that's your, it's a profitable ad set, then that's likely the age demographic that's working for you. So that kind of ties in with these next two lines, which is just duplicating campaigns or ad sets with those new demographics and seeing if it performs better than the original. I would say for me right now, uh, most times it's it's not, but it's still something to try out. Some things work for people that don't work for me for whatever reason. But I just believe that's because every single purchase made on any store is just a giant combination of so many variables happening at once that no one can ever be the same. Now, my primary focuses this year in 2022 are going to be these three things. One, creating and managing a proper testing cycle system, you know, always testing new creatives, new copy, finding out the best way to do that for the specific store um, and even products to that extent if it's possible. Um, number two is, I would say I see this a lot, always be moving. Performance can get stagnant. I notice if you're running an ad account, let's say you have a two row ads and you just leave the ads on for a week and you come back in a week later, there's likely not going to be a two row ads. I feel like the more time you spend on the Facebook ads manager, the more success it likes to give you. Um, it's another one of those just weird things in my head, but it's it seems pretty legit from what I notice. Um, and three, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Pretty self-explanatory. So before getting frustrated with ads, make sure you're selling a product you know how to market. I think this is very important. And if it doesn't have to be a product you like, um, it just means that you have to be willing to learn about that product and about its market. Because if you don't know about the product, then that'll convey through your store and through your ads. And it may very well be a reason why they aren't working. But that's all I got for this 2022 strategy reveal video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, make sure to leave a big like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.